these are compressor turbine blades out of a Dash 20. Um, these were sent to us by somebody that requests they be inspected and returned in overhaul condition. If So these blades, they go through, CT blades go through a quite pretty big and uh, intensive inspection. First thing I do is I give every one of them, which in this particular engine was 58, I give every one of them a good detailed visual inspection to look for obvious stuff like deformation, sulfidation, um, pitting, anything that's gonna, that's going to that's gonna catch my eye. That way I can kind of put it off to the side and then go from there with it. I was, I was raised by, by a perfectionist, my dad is, and I've just always done everything the way it's supposed to be done. Pay attention to detail, you know, it helps to be kind of anal about things and also it's kind of required back here in this area but I've you know for me I've always done things the way they were supposed to be done and never took shortcuts or halfway do them so with this kind of stuff that's actually beneficial because you're saving the customer money in the long run uh, if you were to just kind of skim through these and just be like, oh, you know, they're good. Yeah, you saved the customer money right now for the whatever, but in the long run, you're not helping anybody. You're only hurting yourself. These blades are very expensive, and one or multiple of these blades failing is ultimately going to make the engine fail, and uh, it can get really bad. So, yeah. I care because I put everything into my work. I take pride in my stuff. I don't I don't like to do stuff halfway. I consider what I do has my, you know, it's something I did and being done right, I know it was done right and that's it. I feel a lot better. I can't consciously would never be able to do anything halfway. It regardless if it was blades or you know, doing something simple like tightening a screw. It's just not how I was raised. Okay, so this this small amount of blades right here out of 58, unfortunately, were the only ones that fully passed overhaul. Other than they have a little bit of a first stage sulfidation kind of starting, which you can see by the... pitting right there. It's actually kind of working through the coating. The ones on the left and the ones in this bag uh, dimensionally failed when these blades come in for overhaul inspection or every so many thousand hours you're required to have your CT blades removed and stretch checked to prevent blade failure these failed the stretch check so these blades failed dimensionally uh, the blades have to have a stretch test so each blade should have a marking a dimensional marking on the blade platform and it's going to have a dimension on it of what this blade's dimension was originally and it's measured on special tools like this one here and um, so yeah so generally you have a, a zeroing block that zeroes this piece this assembly at the right amount it's it's zero now so when you take a blade to stretch it, this one's marked 0 0.240, so 0.240. And you install it in the stretch checker, and we slowly run it down in. It is at, it is at 43 and a half, which means it has stretched three and a half thousandths since it was originally marked when the blade was new. Pratt & Whitney only allows you to have up to three thousandths of stretch. Anything over in the blade, is, it's done. It's rejected. You cannot use it uh, as of right now. If that changes later, I don't know. But So 
that's what's going on with these blades over here. They're all dimensionally stretched beyond limits. And what'll happen is as this blade continues to grow from the centrifugal force and the heat as the engine's running, it can actually just break. And uh, that'd be bad, that'd be all bad. A blade breaking off in the hot section would cause the engine to fail.